Member for the Regional Forum told us some, some things that make us worry. Identity not respected. We're not buried. We've been told get out their wheelchairs and buses, make room for prams and shouted at by passengers and a bus driver. Because he could not wheelchairs cannot travel on the same bus at the same time when they go out together. I think that was disgusting. People have been left for longer in continent pads and three people have been given cheaper ones to make them sore and told they've got to wear them. People even 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 if they did not have to have them, they've got to be forced to have them. And cheap sorry, cheaper ones you say. Okay. And people's support has been cut, leaving them veil, scared and vulnerable, especially at night. And people do not get to choose their own support team. I, all council, not all council services are accessible for, for like spoke, spoke pools. Or swim pools, sorry, swim pools. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon, panel. How, how would any of you feel if these things were happen to you? How can you help us do something about it? And please do not just tell us to complain because it is the people who are, are, who are supposed to complain to work, who work for it, and it's not make decisions. I'll go first then. Um, I have to admit about the transport, I'm really disappointed over that because Richard Blake, who used to be on the National Forum, did a hell of a lot of good work around that and to make things accessible. But again, as you get told, it costs us a lot of money to make things more accessible. Um, but I think they, came up, they come up with excuses after excuses. And again, as I say, the only way things are going to change if we all stand together and make a change. Um, they have no right to kick you off the bus. They have no right to tell you to move and that if you're using a wheelchair, whatever. That's what they were originally put there for. And then they put the signs for prams and that. But you have more rights than, I'm sorry, as before the baby and that. Um, and Paddy, about the cuts, that is a massive worry even for the National Forum members. It's because we are seeing people now struggling who have 24 hours support going down to so many hours a day. Also is, I always question the people with the money, is when they put people in these homes and these hospitals, it costs us millions and billions and that, right? But they put these people in the community where they should have been and that, it doesn't cost anywhere like that. So, there's problems is, and that is that there's a friend who me and Bill know right now, who is not very thingy bit lighters. He's a smoker, but he thingy's around and he can cause fires. The supporter has to keep that lighter all the time. The problem is, his support's getting cut. And that's a worry, because he'll end up back in these places, and that's what we've got to stop.
Um, my my mum was in a wheelchair for quite some time, so I do have some experience of of people trying to navigate life um, from from wheels, which is not easy. Um, and we still need to make things better. Um, I think it's it's really hard, isn't it, when you're in that position to stand up for yourself when people may be abusing you or or having a go at you. Um, it is right. There's no reason why you shouldn't be there. And um, if there's a tussle around um, who who can have the place, then I think it's every everybody's right to stick to the guns and say this is my place. Um, but that's easier said than done. I know that. Uh, councils um, are still. I mean, my council is still spending some money on making disability access better. It's not as much as it used to be. Um, but we are trying to improve disability access. I think one of the problems is that even where some places are accessible, it, the information about that isn't as, isn't as open, or isn't, people aren't as aware of it as possible. Um, so some of our swimming pools are really quite accessible, but not everybody knows that. Um, in terms of, of things happening to people and the, the kind of care and support that you get in, this, you know, I'm a senior manager, I'm a boss for social care services. I don't feel very proud particularly of some of the things that we're having to do at the moment because we haven't got the money to do the stuff that I really think is the right thing to do um, and would be good things to do. Um, Salford, for example, has lost nearly half of the money that it gets from the government to provide services. And we have had to do things which affect people's care and support. So, you know, I have to be absolutely upfront and honest about that. There may be people in this room that have experienced that. The, the thing I think from your perspective is, you've got to make yourself a powerful voice. You've got to lobby. You've got to make it clear that some of these things you know, is it, you stand up for yourselves and make people hear about it because actually that's where the power comes from. The power comes from you making some of this stuff visible. Um, what I'm trying to do is to make things as fair or as just as possible. It doesn't make them good. Um, so I think we, we try. But, I mean, some of the stuff that's in here is just plainly unacceptable. It's unacceptable to be left in an incontinence pad or a, something that is not right for somebody. So... If that's the case, we have to address it, um, and that wouldn't be um, um, okay. Um. I think really, I, I can only echo that. Really, it's um, councils are in the unfortunate position of having to make really, really awful choices between two bad things. It's almost trying to find the least bad choice to make for some councils at the moment. And I think it's not just Salford Council or Blackburn Council or Knowsley Council or any council. It's all the councils. Um, we're all in um, very, very bad financial times. And I know we keep on telling you. And I know you're probably sick of hearing it. But it is the truth. And social workers and team managers and service managers are having to make really, really tough calls every day about who to remove a service from or about who to provide a service to. In terms of public transport, I think that's um, it's quite a tricky one. Certainly, Lawrence showed us a video earlier, um, Lawrence who talked to us about co-production, and he talked about the design of trains. Obviously, Lawrence uses a wheelchair. Um, he told us that he can't get from one end of the train to the other because his wheelchair doesn't fit between the, ch between the chairs. He also told us that the food trolley does fit between the chairs. The food trolley goes up and down the train all day, but Lawrence can't. I wonder how many people in wheelchairs and how many people with prams were involved in the design of the inside of those buses. When there's just one or two spaces for a wheelchair or a pram, but there's three or four or five people want to use them, there's going to be a conflict, isn't there? So maybe it's something about the design of the buses rather than, rather than what the councils can do. And again, the council doesn't operate the buses anymore. These are private companies. And they make more money by having more seats that people can pay for. So maybe there's t it's time for some legislation from the government about buses, about public transport. Uh, 
I think it's really very difficult for public authorities uh, to deal with the cuts and so on. I think my comments are more directed at the nation as a whole. This is the sixth largest economy in the world. And we're talking about n cheaper incontinence pants and pads. The money saved by cutting quality pads must be so minuscule that it doesn't even feature in a budget. This is numbers for numbers sake. The money that we spend on other things should be questioned. We all know we can't have infinite money, but we all have the agency to choose what it's spent on. And most of us who have a household budget, we spend it on the priorities and we work towards the niceties. So it is time for local authorities, governments to say, actually, we can't keep bailing out the banks for billions and billions of pounds, or we can't keep subsidizing X, Y, Z, or we can't make an eight million pound surplus as Southern Health Trust did last year at the same time while cutting back on services. These answers are not sufficient when it comes to the quality of life of individuals in this room or outside of this room. And for bus companies and private providers, well, it's quite simple. You enforce the law. It's all against the law, and it's up to agencies to work together to enforce those laws, and the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Disabled Person, which Britain signed up to almost 10 years ago. It's not enough to talk about fiddling around with budgets and so on and so forth. £214,000 a year to keep a person in ATU, ATU. Five times what it costs to keep a prisoner in a prison. There's one of your answers. Why spend the money in that way without accountability of where that money goes? It is time to stop arguing about the pennies and look at the bigger picture. We're already behind on our spend in these areas. These buses should be fit for purpose 20 years ago, not being brought up to speed now. These trains should have been fit for purpose when they were constructed. I was on the Northern train line last night. You couldn't have had a wheelchair on it for all sorts of reasons at all. But that would, you couldn't have walked all around if you were 85 and had mobility issues generally. It was a cattle truck. But we've got the me mechanisms are all there to deal with this. You were right, we don't need more legislation. What we do need is people to actually start enforcing it and to do it fairly and for equally for every member of our society, including in transport issues. Uh, conference, I, I'm, I'm not going to do what sometimes happens on question time and repeat what everybody else has just said, but there are, because there's been some very powerful examples there, there, there are just a few practical things I would like to share with you. The, um, uh, you mentioned the incontinence pads. This came up locally for us in our borough, um, and through the partnership board, uh, we did actually challenge, uh, I think it was through the CCGs, uh, clinical commissioning groups, uh, the quality of those pads, and that was addressed, and that was, that was a good way of showing how locally we were able to influence what was going on, and it was our, it was our partnership board that did that and actually challenged that. So there is, there's an example of there where you can actually uh, make that difference happen and, and challenge it. The other was, uh, the and, and colleagues have said it already, but it, it is never acceptable to leave people um, scared and vulnerable. That is never, ever accepted. Uh, and it's zero tolerance. Uh, from, from uh, You can take that from, from ADAS point of view. That is absolutely zero tolerance on that. The, the, I'm not a politician, so I can't um, uh, talk to you about the cuts uh, other than the fact that, as Sue's described, we are working through what we have to spend. Uh, and increasingly, local authorities spend on social care is becoming more and more uh, their, their biggest spend area. Uh, and it is becoming uh, a challenge for us all. The final thing I wanted to share with you is the, the accessibility question. Uh, how do you get stuff that's accessible? You can use mechanisms uh, like your health and wellbeing board. So our health and wellbeing board were challenged around a new lifestyle center, leisure center, uh, that was being built. And they said, look, is it going to be accessible? Is it going to have track hoist? Is it going to do this? Is it going to do that? And the developers, quite frankly, hadn't thought about that. Uh, and neither had our, uh, our team that were involved in that from the council developing it. And it came through. Uh, uh, through to the Health and Wellbeing Board, and the Health and Wellbeing Board then challenged that. That new centre that's going to be developed has got all those accessible uh, items in it. So uh, if you don't know about your Health and Wellbeing Boards, you should, and you need to find out. So if you 
you've got your commissioners on the table, grab them. And if not, you need to make sure you ask the question about health and wellbeing boards because they are, they are a, 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 an area that is holding responsibility and has some of the senior bosses on it as well.